What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I'm your host, Kieran Anderson, and today we have Captain Keith on with, with us. Captain Keith, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today, sir? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you were just saying you're from Florida. Yes, sir. Whereabouts in Florida? So I grew up about 40 minutes north of Panama City, Florida, uh, in a little town named Mariana, Florida. Nice. And uh, is there a lot to do there, or is it primarily fishing? It's primarily a fishing little town, fishing, hunting outdoors type of uh, area. So I grew up fishing and uh, growing up in the woods. So Hey, that's always fun, though. Better outdoors than indoors, right? Yes, sir. Give us a little bit of an uh, overview about yourself. And uh, you already explained uh, where you're from, but what do you do primarily? So right now, I'm, I actually, I did 20 years in the Navy and I retired wow. from there. And uh, so now I'm a charter boat fishing in Panama City Beach. I do inshore and offshore or some refer to as near shore. I'm um, on a state water boat, so I can only go out to nine nautical miles. Um, but that, that gives a pretty good area from the three base systems we have down here and, and the near shore waters. So, How long have you been doing chartering? I've been doing this about seven years now. Wow. And what? how did you get into that? So after I retired, I finished up my college degree, and this is something I always wanted to do. And I, I've fished all over the world. Um, and I wanted to share this with other people. Um, so that's kind of how I got into the charter business and, and the world of, of fishing with the others. So um, I like to I like to take people out there and watch them have a good time. And I get more enjoyment out of that now than I do out of actually catching fish myself. So I guess it kind of goes hand in hand. I mean, you're you've been on the water since you were young, obviously in the Navy and stuff. So it kind of works out. Yes, sir. So I've been, I mean, I've been, I remember going fishing with my grandfather and my dad when I was probably four years old on the local rivers. And then it just grew with uncles and brothers. And, you know, it was always, no matter where I was stationed at, I always was able to fish. So uh, that's awesome. I've gained a lot of experience around the world. So what was the process like going from retiring from the Navy to now starting your own charter business? Well, it was a little bit of adjustment and getting used to. Um, I still get up early every morning. Uh, obviously, being a charter boat captain, we, we start our days pretty early. Um, I have free reign now of my schedule, uh, yeah. especially retired. So it gives me it gives me a lot of uh, flexibility in my schedule. So uh, it's definitely it, it's a good thing though because I mean I'm all on water and, and I love being with people like you said earlier. Um, I just enjoy talking to people and getting to know people and watching them catch a bunch of fish and making memories out there. So that's what it's all about. Yes, that is what it's all about. What kind of fish are you primarily going after? So it depends if we're doing inshore. I do trout, redfish, flounder. Um, I have caught a few tarpon, sharks, uh, that kind of stuff in the bays and near shore. I catch mahi, mahi, a variety of different snappers and groupers, uh, king mackerel, uh, sailfish occasionally and some blackfin tuna so wow that's quite a quite a difference in fish so we get to mix it up a little bit around here so with snapper where uh where are you getting those at so snapper they they range anywhere from you know 30 feet of water on out uh, to be in state waters the deepest water i fish is probably about 90 90 feet of water um and any any ledges structures uh live bottom reefs uh, that's usually where you find your snappers. That's one thing I really like to do is I like to go out and find new spots, and, you know, the whole snapper, and I like to fish those spots. And yeah, it's just, to me, that's where it's at, you know, is, is the game of finding these fish and then figuring out how to catch them. So there's a lot of different types of snapper, right? There is. What we, is have, we have mangrove. We have, uh, I'm just going to name a few. I know I'm going to miss some out. Yeah. Mangrove. Uh, lane snapper, um, the red snapper, obviously, the bee liners are the vermilion snappers, um, and I'm sure I left some out, but th- those are primarily the snappers that we catch in the waters around here. What's your favorite out of all those? Which one is your favorite to catch? I like I like to catch the mangrove snappers probably, but the red snappers is definitely a second best. Uh, uh-huh. I like to catch them because they're, they're not a real hard biting snapper, so you you have to pay attention because they're a little finicky sometimes. So, and uh, so you got to you got to learn new tricks on how to catch them. So, so with, with those red snapper, um, 
how deep are those ones in? Are they in schools? Talk to me about it. I want to know all about them. Okay, so they're primarily living around structures and reefs and ledges, like I said earlier. Uh, they eat crustaceans. They eat, they eat dead bait, the smaller baits. They eat live bait as far as like little little live fish. Uh, that's primarily what they, they like to eat. Um, they, they do school around that structure. So they may be anywhere from 12 inch snappers there to 30 plus inch snappers wow. there. So, uh, yes, that's a red snapper. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to look them up. Wow. Those things get big. So you were saying up to 30 inch anyway, sorry, I interrupted you, but those are insane. They are. So, so, you know, and, and for families, they're a great fish to catch because, you don't know what you're going to get hooked off, hooked up. Like the other day I had a family, they hooked up one. Um, and everybody in the family ended up fighting the fish because we started with a little boy and then he couldn't, you know, he could reel it in. Then mom grabbed it and then mom couldn't reel it in. So I, I basically had dad over there to reel the fish in. But, you know, it, it's just one of those type of fish. It can be of all ages. It just yeah. depends on bites. But, uh, Would you say that the red snapper are pretty – pretty easy to to hunt down and catch uh once you find your spots in the yeah. gulf of mexico uh and you locate them um but you know some days we'll see them on our graves and they won't bite so we have to figure hmm. out how to bite and what bait they're eating that day so i mean it it changes hmm. as far as the moons and stuff too so it's um they can be finicky um I always tell people I never go out there thinking I'm going to get a catch a cooler full of fish because every day is different out there, even if you know where they're at. Um, but primarily, you know, they're going to be around structure somewhere. Yeah. So if you get around that structure, you can usually you usually find a few uh, red snapper. So what what makes red snapper so much different than most like the other type of snapper or other type of fish that you're going after? Um, primarily a table fare. Um, Everybody loves to eat red snapper, yeah, um, and that's that's primarily what people like to catch. That's what because and we get a, a specific season, so those seasons dictate when people can bring those fish home or not. So um, that that's a big driver on the Gulf Coast and the Gulf yeah. Mexico is snapper season, um, and it generates a lot of a lot of charter boat trips, and you know, and that's. Uh, we're fortunate to have those seasons now. So, when is snapper season? Red snapper. So, for our state water boats, it started June the seventeenth, and it goes out July thirty first. Um, we have a few fall season dates. Um, they're spread out over a bunch of weekends. So I'm, I'm probably not going to get into all those. Yeah. Um, last one's going to be the Veterans um, Day weekend, and um, that's going to be November twenty fifth through twenty seventh, and that. And- that- lose the snapper season for this year and within that snapper season is there like the best months to go catch them uh whenever they give us a season uh we go get them yeah um, so right now you know we can keep two per person and they have to be over 16 inches so, so there are regulations with those snapper you said two per yep. person over 16 yep. inches they have to be over 16 inches okay. um and they're they're highly regulated. There was a period of time where you could not keep a red snapper. Um, really? So yeah. So they're coming wow. back. So um, basically, the the older the older fish reproduce more red snappers. Uh, obviously, so your big females they they produce a lot more of the juvenile red snappers do. So. Hmm. And when you're catching those red snapper, what are you usually using? Talk to me about that. I mean, you, you said they're on reef. They can be in shallow spots or deep spots. What, what do you go, what are you using? What, what do you usually go to? Are you using sinker rigs or? So basically we use, uh, our, our most, most of us, we use what they call a, a Carolina rig or a slip rig. Uh, we use anywhere from a two to eight ounce sinker yep. on top of swivel and then we use a fluorocarbon 50 to 80 pound um, it can be up to six to eight feet long because they are finicky biters and then we use uh, in the in the gulf you're required to use a circle hook so um, you actually use you know somewhere between a four and an eight off circle hook and then with the with them are you using a fish finder to find them or i mean are you can you see them are they swimming in in spots that you can see them or how does that go so you, you generally use your fish finder to find the structure on the bottom. Yeah. Um, 
and you can actually see them on your screen as they swimming up and down the columns. <laughs> you can take, <laughs> it's pretty cool sometimes you can take and throw like cut up cigar minnows and stuff over the side and chum them up and you can actually get them come up to the surface. Wow. And it's like you're sitting in an aquarium of goldfish is basically what it looks like up under the boat. And so, um, and that's another way I like to catch them too is I like to chum them up to the surface and then just free swim a bait down to them and you can actually watch them bite your bait. And then uh, that's called free lining. Yeah. And, and that's another great way to catch them as well. So are you, are you primarily using live bait or are you using lures too? I primarily use live bait. Uh, we have bait barges down here that we can pull up to in the mornings and you can buy a couple shots of bait. Uh, you know, you usually 20 or $40 for the bait to last the trip. Um, but you can catch them on lures. You can jig far them up and down. They will buy the vertical jigs as well. Um, that's just a lot more work. So, yeah. uh, so uh, you know, the convenience of, you know, I, my primary charter is the family fun fishing experiences. Absolutely. And so I try to make it as fun as I can for the family and as easy as I can for the families to catch these red snapper. With red snapper, are they, are they in schools or are they by themselves usually? They're usually in schools. So if you'll, you'll find a cluster of them, there'll usually be several red snapper there on that spot. And then with those schools, does, does it kind of fluctuate in how big those fish are? Or when the big ones are around, is it usually the big fish? So what I have found, and, and this might be a little bit of a trade secret, uh, is if you free line one of the, you know, a live bait out of the back, Yep. The bigger snapper will come on up in the water column and eat that bait. Hmm. Uh, they tend to get away from the bottom a little bit better than the smaller ones do. So, um, you the one I caught last week was 31 inches and it was 14.1 pounds. Oh and my I gosh. It, and I caught it on the surface. That's where it bit at. So, do they ever, when, when you're catching them on the surface, do you ever see them like come up and spin up? Yeah. And, I, I actually watched that snapper bite the line. Are you serious? Yeah, so it? It, was pretty, it was crazy. It looked like a big tank coming up behind the boat. That is crazy. Does anybody ever fly fish for them? I'm sure they have. I have not done that. Yeah. Um, fly fish for other species, but I have not fly fish for a snapper. So. You were talking earlier about uh, the moons affecting it or like tides and stuff. Talk to me about that. How do the tides affect fishing for red snapper and the moons? So uh, the tides... Uh, I don't feel like they affect the offshore stuff as much as they do the inshore stuff like the trouts and the redfish. Yeah. The, the moons, if there's a full moon, uh, they tend to feed more at nighttime than they do during daytime. So okay. we all feed fish during the daytime. So um, if they get a good feel of fish at night, nighttime, then they're a little bit more, uh, uh, I don't know where I'm looking for. They're a little bit more apprehensive as far as biting the biting our baits in the daytime so do you fish for red snapper at nighttime too i try not to run charters at nighttime yeah uh, the bite for red snapper can be pretty good during nighttime because some really of your, like trigger fish and stuff they, they don't bite at nighttime so you're tend you know the red snapper will so uh, the times i have fished for red snappers at nighttime i've done really well so with artificial lures, if you were to use artificial, what, what kind of lures are you usually using? The vertical jigs, um, and you would just jig them up and down. Um, you'll also catch a lot of amberjack doing that. So okay. you would catch a, uh, you know, a mixture of your amberjack and your red snappers while you're jigging up and down. And then what kind of setups are you using? I know you're talking about the Carolina rig, but uh, give me like a little overview on, on the setups that you use. So I use that I use that rig I was talking about as far as the free lining. Uh, I use you know sixty. I usually use sixty fluorocarbon yep. and like four off circle hook on that line. And then with the sinker, I use a four ounce sinker, and then a, a barrel swivel, and then a you know a four to six foot long. I usually use fifty to eighty pound liters on them. Uh, depends on the water clarity and four to six off circle hooks. And then um, I put a live a live bait on it and drop it down. And when it hits the bottom, I have my customers reel up five or six feet where it's off the bottom. And um, and then they wait for the bite. And when they feel the tug, they usually have a red snapper. Do, uh, do the leader lines make a big difference for those red snapper? I believe they do. Uh, uh, I believe the more indivisible, indivisible you make that line, the better off you are. So, 
So um, you're you're using really thick line. Yeah, I mean comparatively what I usually use because I really like like tackle, but these these fish two to four pounds they will give you a fight. Like yeah. they they fight like no other fish. And so with those fly lines, you're basically you just put a hook on. It's like bluefin tuna fishing, right? You let the bait do its own thing. Talk to me about the different areas that you can put the hook into the, into the fish, right? Do you, do you do the same stuff? Like you can do a nose hook or a belly hook, um, depending on where you want the fish to go. So if, if, you know, that depends on the bite of the fish. Yeah. If I get a good bite by just putting the hook through the, the, through the bait's eyes, then that's, that's what I do. Uh, Then if I had to hook them through the back, uh, to get a little bit more action out of them, then I'll do that as well. Um, also, you know, if you hook them between the dorsal fin and the nose that tends to make them swim down more. Uh, so if I need to get the bait a little bit deeper on the free line, that's the way I do that as well. How big do, uh, how big do these fish usually get? So, you know, a red snapper, you know, 40 inches can weigh up, weigh up to 50 pounds and that fish can be years old. Um, so, I mean, if you catch one close to 50 pounds, that that's a monster red snapper. So that is a dinosaur, but, um, you know, I say over 30 inches is a really big red snapper. What's the biggest one you've got? So the biggest one I ever caught was 38 inches. Are you serious? And that was, that was humongous. How was that? How was that fight? Actually, I I called that one personally. And so, I mean, it took just about everything I could to get fish to the boat. So, and that's on here. So that's kind of, you know, it's kind of a little bit more of a lot tackle gear. So. Do they usually put a pretty good fight up? Oh, they do. They'll stop the drag. I mean, they'll stop you in the fight. Because uh, the fish that we're catching, they're in shallow water. So to me, they're fighting a little bit harder to get down to the structure. Yeah. So uh, if they see the structure, they're going to try to get to it. So, do, uh, do people ever specifically ask you to target a certain type of fish like, like red snapper? Yes. And... Uh, especially during red snapper season because yeah. people are there looking to go catch that fish for dinner like there yeah. that that's the big draw down here i mean it brings a lot of tourism down to our area in panama city beach to catch this fish i mean in in all seriousness and all real realistic how do i say this to be completely realistic how often can you say we're gonna catch a red snapper like today we're gonna go for him we're gonna get him is it pretty much every single time if I can get in the Gulf, I can pretty much get people on red snapper. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, it's still fishing, though. I tell people that, like, I will give you my best shot, but at the end of the day, you know, they are still fish. Yeah. So, um, you know, yesterday, I, you know, we, we had a trip where we only caught one keeper, but we caught wow. probably 20 or 25 that was under the size limit. So, I mean, we have those days as well. So, but they're catching fish. It's just whether we get to bring them home or not. So, what kind of boat are you running? So I'm running a 22 foot bay boat, okay, uh, tiger, with a 200 horsepower outboard on it, center console. Nice. So, um, we get out there quick, and you know, we try to get our, our get some fish for dinner, and then we get back quick. So, you know, um, these four hour trips are pretty productive down here. So, so with your charter, they're four hour four hour days. So I run four, six, and eight. Uh, okay. I also run it's trip in the bay and that's usually a three hour trip and that's just an introductory you know take a, a young child out there and let them catch some fish well let's get into the into your actual charter but a couple of questions before we get into that um what kind of tips and tricks can you give us for catching red snapper fine structure um try to get away from public numbers try to find some private stuff that you, know, that you find on your own um and you'll see them stacked up on top of it um, and if you'll follow what I've talked to about as far as the line and the leader and the lead um, and the bait, you shouldn't have any problem catching red snapper. Uh, yeah. They're pretty prevalent in the Gulf of Mexico. So, and then yeah. do you have do you have any uh, favorite recipes for them? Um, so I like to either bake or grill them um, with some old bay or butter on them, and then uh, I make a sauce, a cream sauce with capers on it, and then I put it on top of the red snappers. I usually eat that with some asparagus or couscous or rice on the side. They're pretty tasty. Uh, it's hard to beat a red snapper. So you're making me hungry. <laughs> so 
So with your actual charter, back to that, you have a boat and people can go just look you up online or how do we, how do we book with you? So Old Town Charters is on Facebook and Instagram. Um, feel free to like me on there or follow me. I encourage people to do that because it kind of shows what we're doing and what we're catching that time yep. of the year. I also have a website, www.oldtowncharters.com. Uh, that gives a little bit more background on me as far as the trips are offering, the pricing of the trips. Or you can call me at 850-814-5289 and, or text me, and I'll be glad to talk to people and answer any questions they may have. Um, I may not be the best fit for them. If not, then I can send them to another charter. Or you know, um, There's a whole bunch of us that we work together down here. And we always try to get the customer to the best fit. So, so Keith, with your boat, talk to me about your setup. Um, do you have a big fish finder? Obviously, you said you got some motor, big motors on there. But uh, what's your setup like on there? And what kind of rod and reels do you keep on there? So I, I run Daiwa rods and reels on my boat. I run spinning reels. Um, I also have conventional reels for trolling for your kings and your mahi mahi. Okay. And that kind of stuff. And then I have the light tackle where I go catch red drum and trout yep. and flounder those and sheep's head. So um, and when you get on my boat, we can go do anything. We can go from we can go from bay fishing to deep water fishing. You That's know, awesome. Within the nine miles. Um, and when the customer gets on my boat, everything is ready to go. We're 100%. Uh, if we go buy a bait, we pull up the barge, we get bait, and we're gone. So there's no time wasted. So. What uh? What kind of electronics you got on there? So I run the Hummingbird, the okay. Helix Hummingbird. Um, I also have a Bluetooth radio on there for the convenience of the you know the customer, so they can listen to their own music or we can listen to music while we're out there fishing as well. So I try to make it as accommodating as camp for everybody. Absolutely. And what about when you're looking at weather forecasts and stuff like that? Do you use a certain app or anything before you go out on a trip? I use the Windy apps, yeah. and also you know I use the the Weather Channel. Um, I use probably four or five apps total. And, um, you know, we like the live radar. We look at that as well. So, um, I really, the, you know, that's the foremost of any fishing trip is safety. So, Absolutely. and weather safety patterns. So, uh, well, you got years of experience through the Navy and now your charter business. It's, it's super rad to hear, um, a veteran like yourself that started a business and is doing something like this. Uh, it's really, really amazing. And I, I appreciate you coming on and talking to us about this and talking to us about Red Snapper too. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you for Salt Life for supporting me. And, uh, you know, that's what it's all about to me is being a waterman out there. Yeah. Uh, that's what I tell everybody. You'll never find a happier captain out there because every morning when I get on that boat, I got a smile on my face. So, and, uh, you know, I love what I do. So. Every time you get on the ocean, it's the best thing in the world, right? Absolutely. Especially when you see the smiles on other people's faces. So Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Well, Keith, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening in. We'll catch you next time on Above and Below. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good day.